Hey everybody, it's K-Dubs and Little Miss Tabitha here and we're about to go for a walk in one of our favorite places which is packed to the brim with some of my favorite things, spring ephemerals. Um, I'm going to show you at least 10 awesome spring ephemerals that come up in the eastern United States. Tabby just made an awesome find. Actually, I found it because she doesn't know anything about plants. But this is really incredible. So this is kind of a rare species. Um, and I love this place because it has a lot of these rarities in full force. But all of these here are twin leaf. Jeffersonia diphylla. And it has a very creative name. Twin leaf. See that? So this creatively named plant has a single white flower, which we are too late for, but we can see. Hey, Tab. Uh, there we go. This one just dropped her petals. So it has one single white flower per cluster of leaves here, and those flowers turn into these really cool seed pods I'm trying to find a really good one here's an awesome one so this seed pod here this will pop open and there's seeds in there that'll drop down and they are dispersed by ants a lot of these spring ephemerals utilize ants and um, the ants will get kind of a trade-off for dispersing the plants seeds the seeds commonly have a eliasome on them which is called it's just like this oily fatty substance that the ant gets to eat once it takes it back to its nest but the plant then has duped it because the plant has had its seed dispersed and put underground into the ant nest pretty dang cool are you being a sassy poos today <laughs> are you being sassy the day that i have to make this video of you oh but it's okay you found a flower very good girl. What did you find? Oh, you found a spring beauty. It's a little late already for these guys. But this is a spring beauty. And there are two species within the genus Claytonia here. And this is Claytonia virginica. High stinkling. We found a new species. So this is wood geranium. And it has these big five pointed leaves and these leaves come up and they'll soon shoot up something like this. You can see the leaves actually pretty early in the season. They'll be pretty low to the, um, the ground and then they'll come up and they'll shoot up these little flower pods and then they'll look like this. They're very beautiful. They're actually pretty hardy flowers. They'll stay around for a couple of days, get a little spotty and a little old looking like this guy and then they'll fall off. But this is wood geranium, uh, geranium macula autumn and it is a native uh, plant that you will commonly actually see in greenhouses. They'll sell them because they're kind of easy to propagate. All right, let's move on to our next one. Someone's getting impatient. This is my favorite part of the whole trail. Oh, someone's making an observation. This is the perfect spot for us to talk about bluebells. So, Virginia bluebells, they are native and they have a huge range across most of the eastern United States. And they are pollinated by bees. Uh, many different species of bees, but this little one's a bumblebee. And sometimes a bumblebee can actually be sneaky and can actually cut on the top of the flower. Oh, she's doing a good job there. Getting stuck inside, actually doing what she's supposed to do, pollinating the flower. But sometimes they'll actually cut on top of a flower like this to get to the nectar without actually pollinating it. And, um, this will form really big carpets like this here. It's called Virginia Bluebell, not only because it occurs in Virginia, but because the 13 original colonies were originally all named Virginia. But it's one of my favorite of the spring ephemerals. It lasts for about mm, maybe three weeks. But after today, you can see that some of these are ready to uh, they're on the, on the last ring of their flowers, so they're ready to ha no longer have flowers. The foliage will die back. It doesn't last all summer, and that's about it. Comes up for a couple of weeks, 
forms a beautiful carpet over the entire forest, and that's it. Tab, we have a lot more plants. We need to go find them. I know you love sitting here and taking in the view, but we gotta go. There's a reason these guys are called the spring ephemerals. They are so short-lived. This is the remnants of a Dutchman's Bridges. Uh, it still has its beautiful foliage. It's in the Dicentra genus. And it makes these cool little seed pods, uh, which are also distributed by ants. Let's see what happens. These look ready, so I don't feel too bad. And we'll just drop them on the ground. So that way the ants can get them. But there they are. Whoa, pretty dang cool. You know what? I'm going to get a close-up shot of those. Because those seeds have that eliasome on them with the treat for the ants. Alrighty, there they are. The seeds of Dutchman's Bridges. And I don't feel bad opening these guys. I'm just going to put them on the ground and some ants will find them. But that black part, or brown part, is the actual seed. And those sweet little tentacles are the oily, fatty substance that the ants will get as a trade-off. Man, everybody is out today. Oh, this beauty is wild blue fox. It is known as a scientific name, Phlox divaricata. And it sometimes comes in different shades, but it's mostly this bluish pinkish color. And it is not to be confused with Dame's Rocket. This is a true fox um, in that it has five petals here. Uh, Dame's Rocket is a brassica species that has only four and this is what it looks like oh, that's some twin leaf but right here it's not unfurled yet but you can see how cute and like tightly twirled those guys are until they come out you've got these opposite leaves on the stem and a really pretty bluish purple stem that sticks out what should we go see next I had no idea that we were going to find so many goodies today. Uh, here's a really cute little double feature for you. Let's check it out. These are two of my favorites just because I love those colors. This guy here that's in focus, look at how gorgeous this is. This is toad trillium. Kind of looks like toad skin I guess, right? But it has these delicate little flowers and you can tell it is a trillium because it has one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. It has three petals, three sepals, and three leaves. Uh, so we have a couple other Trillium species here and I hope we can find them. But this guy right here is Trillium sessile, toad shade. I also have right next to us, let's change our focus. This is our beautiful dwarf larkspur. And its name is Delphinium tricorn and it has a couple look at it's a really good cedar so meaning it produces a lot of seeds and they're very hardy i have a couple of them in my garden just from the seeds i've scattered them on the mulch and they grew so pretty impressive we have a landscape here and these are kind of in the second wave of ephemerals both of these guys are so here we have the uh, toad shade mixed in with the larkspur and they've kind of come in after the blood root, after uh, most of the spring beauties are gone. And we are left with this beautiful double purple and maroon chorus. Was that poetic enough for you? Good. Aren't these Trillium grandiflorum just like showstoppers? Like, uh, if there was a wedding in the forest, this would be the flower to go for. So again, this is a trillium, and we all know that because we have one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. This is one of the more showy trillium that we have that's more um, erect. Its flower is not nodding underneath the leaves, and it lasts for a couple of weeks. So these Trillium have been here for uh, two weekends now, and they'll probably be here for one more. They also have seeds, again, if you aren't tired of hearing this, that ants disperse in the landscape. 
But these big showy flowers, if we look at the landscape here, the forest, we can kind of pick them out. There's a colony there, just because they're so white and big and bossy. Oh, look, there's one. Okay, it's a little early, but these are some of my favorite spring ephemerals. These are called bear corn. This is last year's. It comes, it stands up about that tall. And in the early spring, they are these beautiful little succulent little guys. Uh, if you notice something that's different from this guy and this guy, it's a color, right? Um, this is a parasitic plant. It is a parasite of oak trees. So it's probably feasting on the roots of this oak tree and stealing carbon and, oh, we have some nicer ones over here. Let's go check them out. Let's look at these guys here. Oh yeah, they are out. There they are. Cute little bear corn. Um, they're called bear corn because it's said that bear will eat these when they break hibernation and we can eat them too. Um, but the thing about bears is that they will break uh, the bear's fecal pellet because it has a couple chemicals in there. Um, these don't taste very good, but you can fry them in butter and they are tasty. But then again, you can fry pretty much anything in butter and they are tasty. I'm going to take these home and eat them. There's a lot of them and they're parasitic plants so I don't feel too bad. But they're one of my favorite just because they are neat. Hmm, little stink left. All right. This guy is called Mayapple, and in, a lot of people think they look like flying saucers. They're pretty cool. Uh, I think they're really cool for a couple of reasons. One being that some of them will only have one leaf, while others will have two leaves. And the ones that have two leaves will have this beautiful white flower bud that forms. And it also will then make a tasty little treat. Oh, but the trick is, the tasty treat is only tasty for a part of the season. Otherwise, it'll kill you because it's poisonous. I'll put up a uh, picture of those when they come out and they're ripe and in season. And again, don't eat anything in the woods unless you're absolutely positive you have what you have and you have a friend with you so that way they can medevac you out. Okay. So I wanted to throw in a bonus species for you, uh, it being this blue cohosh. It kind of blends in with everything. When it's really young, it's super blue and it's kind of like mysterious and dark and mystical. But what blue, blue cohosh has right now are a little tiny, a little itty bitty tiny flowers right there. It's a tiny green one. And this is the foliage. It has these like double layers of three leaves, if you can see that on my palm. So obviously, Tabby and I didn't get to name every single species that's in the forest here because right now I'm surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve different species and some of them I know I didn't get to but it's just because they aren't distinct yet and it's not what you'll see when you're walking around. So I picked out the most common things that you guys will probably see on your hikes, being uh, your little Mayapple here guy. And I hope that you really like this video and it helps you have fun with your family when you go on a hike. See ya.